So we've got a uh, scatter graph here and um, basically with scatter graphs you're either looking for a correlation <coughs> or you're looking for a relationship between the two variables or you're looking for uh, predicting and estimating. So this question uh, starts off by asking you to find um, the outlier. Well, if we look at the trend of the um, crosses or the correlation of the crosses we can see that they're generally going upwards which is a positive correlation as one increases the other increases and this one uh, is out of place so this is the outlier and it says write down the coordinates so 4, 10 um, Normally with scatter graphs um, the first thing I would recommend is that you draw the line of best fit irrespective of whether the question actually wants it because it uh, helps you to think about what's going on and if you remember the line of best fit um, is drawn such that it's a line that follows the pattern of the crosses but it's supposed to be such that the distance from the crosses above the line and the distance from the crosses below the line balance each other out so you're roughly after something like that where if you look at the distance above and then below they're roughly the same the question goes on and it says draw the line of best fit so we've done that already and it says describe the correlation. Well, the correlation is positive. Uh, it's asked for the correlation. So we don't need to talk about the idea that as the hour spent revising goes up, the mark in tests uh, goes up. Um, if it asks for the relationship, that's what it would be expecting us to say. That uh, the more hours you spend revising, then the better your mark. Um, the question goes on and says a different student revised for nine hours, estimate the mark. So we find nine hours on the scale and we come up to the line of best fit and we come across and according to this correlation then we're going to expect this student to get about 65 marks. Okay, so it's important when you get these estimate questions that you show your method because the examiners have got to follow through your lines. Um, the Spanish test was marked out of 100. So Lucia says, I can see from the graphs that if I, revise for 18 hours, if I revise for 18 hours, I would have got full marks. Comment on what she said. Well, 18 marks, uh, 18 hours, sorry, is up here. Um, the line would go uh, further on. Um, basically, when we come beyond the known data, as in where the crosses uh, stop, then we are extrapolating. In other words, we're trying to estimate from unknown data. We don't actually know what's happening over here. Um, that could be the highest mark students could get. There, must, there might be a question on there that's impossible to answer, or a wrong question has been put on the test, whatever, we don't know. Um, so when you're extrapolating, it's um, not going to be a reliable estimate. You know, you're going beyond the known data. The same as um, down here, you'd be extrapolating. Um, inside here, you'd be doing a thing called interpolating. So you're going in between the data that you actually know, and that is more reliable. Again, not guaranteed because um, these data points are just showing a typical pattern. Um, it doesn't guarantee the actual uh, information. It doesn't, it doesn't exactly mean that somebody who arrives in nine hours will get exactly 65 marks. Um, that student who does nine hours um, may already have known lots of things and um, could be getting uh, 90 marks or, or better. Uh, it's just a feel for what's going on. So we're extrapolating. So the answer to this question is comment on what Lucia says. Then we'd have to say um, 18 hours is beyond the known data so we would be extrapolating and the full marks is not guaranteed Okay, so that's um, scatter graphs and um, generally how to use them and interpret them.